Sooner Scoop HD. We are surrounded by Sooner Royalty today. One of the greatest receivers in OU history, Tinker Owens, is here, as well as Heisman Trophy winner Steve Owens. They are here today. One of the greatest running backs in OU history, Greg Pruitt, is here with us today. The greatest tight end to ever play college football, Keith Jackson, is right over here, ladies and gentlemen. Silver Shoes himself, Joe Washington, is here. The winningest coach in OU football history, national champion head coach, Bob Stoops, is here today. And the king is here today, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the stage the man that brought the Selmans to Norman, three-time national champion head coach, Barry Switzer. What the hell are you laughing at, doing, Leo? <laughs> Oh, me, what a great day. What a great day. Long time in coming. A dream that I had for the family, the Selman brothers, for a lot of different reasons. And we talked about most of those reasons today with the president. But uh, I want to thank the fans for being here today. I want to thank your teammates for being here today. I want to thank those that played with you being here today. And I've seen several of them. I've seen you've seen them. I'm sure that they've come up and said hello to you. I, uh, I want to tell you the story of this, how it all happened. It's not what you think it is, is going out and recruiting a, a guy from your fall. And, and I, I wish that Paul Bell, the great Paul Bell, the coach of your fall, Ironheads, could be here today. We lost him a year ago. Great man, had a lot of great teams. Rusty Griffiths, you, some of my brothers, a lot of the guys that played for him that we recruited to come to Oklahoma. But we've got the coach. I want to miss him. I want to get these guys up front. Jimmy Johnson thinks he coached you, but the real guys that coached you is Rex Norris over here. Where the hell are you, Rex? Rex had him for three years. Rex Norris is our defensive line coach. And uh, Jimmy was on my staff, and uh, Jimmy was my defensive line coach. And, and uh, he would never admit it the day he coached for me. But, but uh, he left and went to Arkansas as their defensive coordinator, and I hired Rex. And Rex got the fortune of coming in and coaching the Selman brothers. What a neat, neat, what a neat job to have. I... Uh, I want to start off with just saying that 11 years ago, I was given the opportunity, the honor, the privilege of introducing Lucia Selman into the College uh, Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. And uh, that night, I made a comment that Barry Trammell wrote in the paper that upset a few people, not anybody that here here today, but I, I, I upset someone when I talked about there will be a trophy, I mean, a, a historic statue someday of the Selma brothers on our campus. And I hope I'm alive when it happens. That was 11 years ago. Things have changed, people have gone, but the people that had that vision came here too and wanted to be a part of it and supported me in it. And that's Joe Castiglione and, of course, the president here in making this happen. It just doesn't happen. You know, we can see black horses with red eyes and big booties with wings and big tits and all that. But the, what we ought to have on this campus is the people that made it famous, gave us our rich heritage, and wh what people come here to see. And that is our great players, the Heismans, now will unveil the Selman brothers today. But let me tell you, this just doesn't happen. And this is going to kind of be like a Paul Harvey, here's the rest of the story. It's like uh, Garth Brooks' song, Unanswered Prayers. In 1970, Chuck Fairbanks was the head coach. When he's gone today, Larry Lacewell was our defensive coordinator. And uh, we had signed, or had committed to us, the number one defensive player in the state, 
outstanding player in the state, the number one voted player in the state from Midwest City Bombers. His name was Barry Price. Barry Price was six foot three, 240, could run. He was heavyweight wrestling champion. He was heavyweight strength uh, champion. He bench pressed 500 pounds in high school. Everybody wanted him. He committed to Oklahoma. The week of signing day, he decommitted and committed to OSU. There is no one, no one had offered Leroy Sel Lucius Selman a scholarship at that point in time, one week from signing date. I'll never forget the staff meeting we're in, and we're in, and Chuck Fairbanks says, is any player out there that you've seen that you think has a physical ability, the position they're playing, they can play another play position, and that would be down, defensive line. And Laceville said, yeah, there's a guy over in the... <laughs> You fall and thinks he's going to be Jim Brown, but he ain't going to be Jim Brown. He's playing in the backfield over there. That, that has the physical characteristics of a, could be a, a, he can run fast enough and he would be a super down lineman if he learns how to play down with his hands on the ground. And uh, that, in that meeting, Chuck made this statement and to all the coaches, and I'll never forget it. He said, well, let's go offer him and bring him in, but we won't offer him until we see him, and he's got to be at least six foot tall. Am I right? So, the Selman appears, a guy named Lucius Selman, a fullback, the thought he was Jim Brown, appears on our campus a few days before signing day. No one else here but a guy named Lucius Selman. Well, he sells himself his personality, uh, his being, his intelligence. He's got me captured. He's got Laceville captured. But he hasn't got Chuck Fairbanks captured yet because I asked Lucius, how tall are you? And he says, I'm five foot 11 and three quarters. I said, Lucius, when you meet Chuck Fairbanks, I want you to stand on your tiptoes. I want you to get up on your tiptoes. When you stake your hands out there, you just keep your balance and shake hands with him. And don't spend too much time with him and <laughs> come visit with us. Well, we had that conversation. He remembers it well. And, <clears throat> and so that happened, that occurred. And we offered a guy for me to follow a scholarship named Lucy Selman. Now, think about Garth Brooks' song, Unanswered Prayers. You know what I mean? I thought about that. Because we lose Barry Price, we're depressed, and all of a sudden we get Lucy Selman, and we didn't even know anything about doing a Leroy yet. <laughs> so we got, we got three of the greatest football players to ever play the game, all by circumstance, just the circumstances of another kid decided he wanted to go to another school and let's go offer this kid a scholarship. And we were right in every way. What class we had, what, how they represented our family, our players. They were so well respected by everybody. They were our great leaders, I promise you. They, they were like coaches on the field. They handled discipline in the dorm. I asked one day, I said, where's old Willie Wright? And I hadn't seen him in three days. Anybody know where he is? And everybody turned and looked at Lucius. And I said, Lucius, I says, where's Willie? He says, he's in Houston. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, I packed his bags and I took him down to, down to in Urban down here and I put him on a one-way one bus to take it to, uh, to Houston. I said, okay. So we went on from there. If it's okay with Lucius, it's okay with me. He, he, Lucius said, we don't need him in our dorm. We don't need that kind of guy. So that's the kind of people they represented, Lucius, Lucius, D, Leroy, and Dewey. And, uh, and, you know, when I think about those things and then not having the Selman brothers, what, what a loss it would have been for Oklahoma football and, and such a game for someone else because the mama was going to pack the bags, Mr. Selman, for Dewey and Leroy to go where Lucius is going to be. So that's what was going to happen. But because of that circumstance and what happened there, with Barry Price making that decision, we now have three of the greatest players that ever played college football. What they did never happened before. They've already mentioned this. Joe Harris, Joe Harris and Joe have already mentioned that this is something that has never happened before in college football. It has never happened since. Three brothers start side by side of a consensus All-American two years in a row, each one of them. All played pro football, all drafted, all played, and then, then 
became the greatest defensive line in college football because when they played, we won 54 games, only lost three and tied one. We won 38 in a row, two national championships, two undefeated seasons. That's what they were a part of. They made that happen. Someone said we were dropping eight back in the 70s and, and rushing three. And someone asked Larry Lacewell one day, says, did y'all invent that defense? And Lacewell looked at him and said, no, Miss Selman did. <laughs> so, so we were so fortunate. Things fell like that for us. And uh, it worked out so great to have all the Selmans be here today to celebrate their kinfolk and three guys we all love. And, one can't be with us today, it's so special. I, I want everybody that's got a computer, which is every damn one of you, once you go on your computer, I want you to Google what Leroy Selman did in pro football. I want you to Google all the first draft choices, the guys that were first picked the first, and see there are a lot of busts. There were a lot of guys that didn't play very much, or some played some, but Leroy Selman and Earl Campbell are the most impressive first round picks in pro football when you look at the, on your computer of what they accomplished. Unbelievable. They're all pro every year, uh, at Pro Bowl every year, uh, Defensive Player of the Year in 1979. Uh, just uh, until he had an injury, he would play on and on, but, but he ended up being the greatest player Tampa Bay ever had. And, and I, I had Ron Wolf say to me, who was a manager, general manager, say to me, he said, Barry, he says, you know, I coached at Green Bay. I coached Howie Long. I coached Reggie White. But Leroy Selman was the best of all. So that says it all. And uh, I think we're all fortunate now that this side of the campus has got heroic statues we would all like to look at. You don't have to spend too much time over there at the Art Center and look at their trophies. I don't know, understand one of them. I really don't. <laughs> Joe, I don't know what that bull is. But anyway, anyway, we've got something here we're proud of. And anybody walks across this campus is going to be proud of and walk up and read their history. 54, 3, and 1 when a Selman played at Oklahoma. That says it all. Thank you for being here. King, ladies and gentlemen, Barry Switzer. All right, we're getting close. We're getting close to seeing this historic statue, but we got one more set of people to hear from. You're going to see him immortalized in bronze here in just a few minutes, but let's see him in the flesh right now and hear from the son of Leroy Selman, Leroy Jr., Dewey Selman and Lucius Selman. Welcome them to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Boomer Sooners. I tell you what, the electricity about five miles away, I could feel it already. And I've never been to a college campus so rich with tradition and electricity as you feel when you come to OU. And just to be a, a part of this today, uh, a day that will go down in history, and I heard the word immortalized used, and that's exactly what it is. Um, this statue here means so much uh, to me, means so much to my uncles. I'm so proud of them and the accomplishments that they have made, not only on the field, the blood, sweat, and tears, uh, but in the classrooms as well and excelled. And, uh, you know, he couldn't have done it without a great family. I see so much family here today. It is like a family reunion, and I love each and every one of you. And, I'm just so happy today. Happy today. You know, uh, 
my my father, of course, would would never take any credit for himself. He always would give credit to his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, every recognition. When you Google his name and you go on to see about his NFL career and Hall of Fame career and the many endowments that he has received, he always gave credit to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first. And he always wanted everyone to know that before, first and foremost. Secondly, he always th thought of his family. You know, his, his, his mo mother and father, Lucia Sr. and Jesse, he always thought of his five brothers being the youngest of nine, he had a lot of siblings to look up to, and he always looked up to my Uncle Elmer, my Uncle Charles, my Uncle Chester, and of course, Uncle Lucius and Uncle Dewey. And he also had three beautiful sisters, my Aunt Joyce, and I'm looking for my Aunt Margaret right there, absolutely, and then in heaven with my father, uh, his aunt Charlene or my aunt Charlene his sister so he always gave credit to his family first and if he was standing here today he would give credit to his wife who met here on this campus and began a new chapter for him into being a devoted husband until the day he died and and also a, a family man of having three kids myself and my older sister there and, and my brother but this statue here today more than anything else, it, it, it encompasses just exactly what they were about. They were a hard-hitting, powerful defense. The opposition never knew what hit them. Didn't have a way to prepare for them. And I hear it, and I hear it more and more every time I come back here. And I love the extra stories. I love hearing from his former teammates that reach back as far as you follow Oklahoma and get to tell me stories about him and how uh, great a person he was, how great an athlete he was, how great these individuals, Dewey and Lucius were, and how they were a team, and, and they were unstoppable. You know, so besides that, today, as we unveil this statue today, it, it, it almost acts as a beacon, a beacon for future generations. It set the tone for the defenses. And this is a beacon of a defensive trio that, none of, that has never happened before and deserves to be recognized today. And I'm just so happy that, that this day has come to fruition. So thankful for the OU staff, everyone, the athletics involved, Zach, Barry Switzer, who is like family to us, and he knows that and we love him so much. And, 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 and we can't say enough for bringing the Selmans to OU. And this statue here is a legacy. It's a... Uh, is something that our family legacy uh, can t continue to come back for years and years to come, generations and generations to come, and uh, and admire, and uh, and to and, and sp be inspired from. You know, so I'm just grateful today. I'm grateful for these two men behind me. I'm grateful for my family, and uh, I'm so excited to see this, and I'm so excited to watch us beat K State in a little bit. So I'll turn it over to one of my uncles that still looks like they could take a few snaps out there. Might need to put some pads on them. God, you, you know, every time I look at Lee, they, they call him Lee, but heck, I call him Leroy. Just like. Leroy was when he was growing up. Yeah, I, I, I used to I used to run a little rain on Leroy and Dewey. I tell this little story and then I want to say hello to the dignitaries here. We had a little football uh, game going on inside of the house. There was a set of hedges right here, the house right here, and the little lane we played in was right there. Good luck. Uh, well, I was cheating them. I was cheating them bad. <laughs> Making the rules up as I go. They would be saying, hey, you can't do that. Oh, yes, I can. I'm good. So one day, 
we go out there and we're playing and I'm, I'm, I'm cheating and everything and boy them two got me cornered they hit me so hard they knocked me over into those hedges broke the hedges down skint my back up and when I got up they were standing there like, okay, come on, let's, you snap the ball again. I say, I quit. <laughs> That's the first time I ever quit something. I say, I quit. So then we come here to the University of Oklahoma, and Coach Johnson was coaching us, and I told Coach Johnson, I don't ever want to coach. I don't, when we've given each other pictures and looks and everything, that means uh, one of my defensive linemen, one of the defensive linemen had to come block on me. I said, I don't ever want to go up against Dewey and Leroy. And I would not go up against them giving them a picture. So Coach Johnson, okay, okay, well, well, Lucius don't want to hurt his little brothers. I said, boy, did he get that wrong? <laughs> I, uh, I am, to say happy to be here is an understatement. I look around and I see the president of the university out in our behalf, Coach Harris, I mean, President Harris, Director of Athletics, Joe Stiglone, Coach Switzer, God, you know, you know it's, it, it runs deep, Coach. Many, many years, in the time of, the, of our recruitment, the years that had an opportunity to work with you and learned a lot of things. I did learn one thing. When we go out recruiting and everything, you know, Coach Switzer had a way of, you, you're driving that car, you know, you're driving him to a place called Coach Switzer go to a lot of places. The head coach do. Coach Stoops know this. You go to a lot of places. You don't know where in the world they know where all these kids live. So you drive them to places. And he had a way of sitting and making you feel pretty dang comfortable. He wasn't over there saying, oh, "Dog, you better, we, we better do this and everything. So I always tell Coach Switzer, hey, when we start driving, I say, Coach, I got this one wrapped up. <laughs> Only thing can happen is you go in there and mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> but I am so happy and elated, overwhelmed truly, to be here and to see all the family here, see ex-players, Coach Norris has been introduced and uh, guys that I knew about before I got here, I wanted to meet Steve Owens. I said, boy, well, I, I sit in the stands on one of two of the trips that Oklahoma extended to me to come up here and watch. I would watch Steve Owens, I, I watched Steve Zabel and, some, and several of the other players. And I said to myself, boy, oh, Steve's a pretty tough player. I sure would hate to have to go head and head with him. And I had an opportunity to meet Steve and then I had an opportunity to meet several of the other players that just graduated before I got here. And then I come back like today and I see a lot of the players that I recruited, a lot of the teammates that I have. It's just truly, truly overwhelming. I'm happy to be here with my family, my lovely wife Clarice. I love you, sweetie. Happy to be here with my daughters, Rayshon, Tiffany, my son, Lucius III. Happy to be here with grandkids, several of them. I got one that just raised his hand up, Lucius the fourth. Lake and got lots of friends, the Franks family. Love you all. But I guess what really makes it feel good is I got blood brothers and sisters. And I can't tell you, I called Elmer. Elmer's having a few health issues, couldn't make it. Charles having a few little health issues, couldn't make it. I called them before I came over here and they just, just completely elated. Wished that they could be here. Big brother Charles, I think 
Coach Switzer know him. He always told me, boy, Charles would come along doing time you did, you'd have been sitting on the bench. <laughs> but he said, hey, I'm not able to get there today, but one day I'm going to get there. I want to see the statue. And then we're lucky and fortunate enough to have uh, Joyce. Now, we, we, we thought, when we was coming along, hey, Joyce was just a young Jesse now. She, she kept us straight. She, she, and we're so happy to have her here. She's, she is truly the, the head of the family. And then we have my brother Chester. I mean, Chester, when, when I first came out, and I, if I go over five minutes, I, you know, I, it, it won't be much over five. Chester, when I first started talking about football, he looked at me with an eye of agreeance. And I say, hey, I must be talking about something pretty dang good here. And then he said, you know, you can, go, uh, you can, you can really do some good things if you play football. If you got good at it, so you can get your football, you can get your football scholarship to a university, and you know that stuck with me. That he would have that type of foresight, because I had no idea where football was going to take me. I didn't know the game. I had no idea it would take us, take me to a university. But he was right. I had the opportunities, and through the misfortune and bad decision of Barry Price, I ended up here at the University of Oklahoma. I love you, kid. You know that. Then there's Margaret. She's always, I've always told her she's the smartest woman I've ever known. She, she, she's very astute in academics and everything. And I just love her dearly. And of course, my sister, late Charlene, she's gone, but she played a major, major role in our lives. And then this young man standing up behind me here. Love you, dearly. And of course, Leroy. And it cannot be enough said about Leroy. Leroy was the, was the ninth ch child. And the thing about it, we talk about Elmer, we talk about Charles, Joyce, Chester. The formula that mom and dad raised them with is the same formula that they raised the ninth child with. It didn't change, they was consistent. We didn't have to look very far for a hero and a man. My dad, my dad was the hero. And it took the whole world a long time to realize the strength of a woman, but we knew it when we were young. <laughs> mom, mom, mom had that strength. And, and, and as I always say, she, she was truly consistent with it. <laughs> I'm happy to be here for this occasion. And I told Dewey, you know, I, I just, don't know exactly where to, where to go with this. I do know this, that there's no way can I stand here, or if any of us three stand here and feel like that we did it on our own. All the family did it. All the friends did it. Had a part to do with it. And the main thing that I hope that people get out of this is that when they come and they look at the, the statue, I hope for the next generation of athletes that come along, that it will serve as an inspiration to them to take a chance, to go out when you don't know where it's going to lead you. Just, just be willing to be consistent and give it your best. And who knows what could happen. I told Dewey I was going to do this. Uh, uh, 
Uh, I hear that the U Fall Ironhead football team is here. Oh, they, God bless you. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. And now I'm going to get out of the way for everybody can hear Dewey. I like hearing him myself, tell the truth. <laughs> Love you all. Thank you all very much. Boomer. Get a rock and roll. Come on, people. We got to have it today. No, the day is so very, very special. That I cannot explain in words what today really means. It's a day that I think Sooner Nation has come together. We come together here at the North End of Warren Stadium and we celebrate a game. But, it's a, it's, but we're celebrating more than that. I, I, I want you to know, everyone here know from the bottom of our hearts, the Selman family, that we are moved by your presence and your commitment and your love. We turn it back to you, okay? We as a family want you to love your families. Most of you here, I know your families. Catherine, we love you. Our children, our grandchildren, and in your family, I want the same thing because I have seen it. I've seen Coach Switzer and Coach Stoops. I've seen you love your kids. I've seen it done. So we keep that going. So really, I want y'all to think about this for ourselves, not just for me, but what Sooner Nation has done here today is beyond measure. It's beyond the idea of what love can do. You're driven by a spirit, and that spirit comes from somewhere, and nothing in this world happens by just by chance. Everything, there is a plan. And the plan today is that you would be here, I would be here, and we would celebrate something. We're celebrating something, and it's big. We're celebrating OU football, and it's big. We're celebrating OU athletics in our communities, and it's for real. I want us to be happy about that. Be very, very happy about that. Your story, your story in your life, in your family's life, is alive. What you've heard about my family is true. There has been some great stories told today those stories were true. And I guarantee you I can open up your lives and your families and I will see the same thing. Now, wait a minute. Now, Dewey Selman is not perfect. Don't go there with me now. What, what? We won't win that in some small court. <laughs> but we will together. We will together understand each other from the standpoint of there is something sacred and true. Yeah, we did start on a small farm. A small farm in East Oklahoma. You follow? My mom and dad, though, we say we didn't have everything, but they gave us a whole bunch of love. A whole bunch of love. Took us to church, taught us the things that were right and true. And through those front doors came some coaches, eventually. Love came from you follow itself. But then one day, one day, thanks to Lucius, Coach Bell, coaches like Coach Swister walked in. They plan a new dream, a new vision. We sit there and we understand what this vision is. And the vision is alive. So we come to Oklahoma University. And we stop here today. But you see, there's going to be an unveiling of statues. But everything that's good sits upon a pedestal. And this pedestal sits here too. But the pedestal inside my story, inside our lives, it sits upon the lives of living people. Lives of living people just like you who have stepped above themselves to give to us. And that is what I call beyond measure. That's what I call Sooner Nation. That's what I call Oklahoma. Okay? When I look at a coach, Switzer, you know, to imagine this. 
we are down and out in 1973. We've just been put on probation. What was there to play for? We were sitting in our apartments in Oklahoma City called Cabal to Arms at the time. There was five players there, Lucius, Leroy, myself, Robert Lee Stewart, Jimmy Harris. What are we going to play for? Coach Swisher gets on TV, gives an impassionate speech about, hey, we have our problems, but you know what? We're going to challenge the Big Eight. We're going to challenge every team we play. We're going to be our very best. We're going to cut and slash from the first quarter to the last quarter, and we're going to win. And was he ever right? As, <laughs> as soon as he finished his speech, Lucius jumped off the couch and he said, let's go work out. <laughs> And not only were we working out, but every player over there was working out too. And we came back to this university on this campus in the best shape of our lives, and we had assistant coaches. Pettibone, you were there. You were there. Charlie North, you were there. Rex North, you were there. We bought into it. And it was great. It was a great run. But I want to continue to thank everybody here today from the Salmon family. I want you all to know exactly how much we appreciate Frank Keating, you on the Board of Regents. We know how hard you work. I want to thank, uh, can I, I would again thank you, Joe Harris. I know your family. I know your brother. I know your dog. <laughs> you know you know somebody well when you know their dog. Joe C., you've been here 24 years? I give the man some props. 24 years of doing anything, eating apple pie, I would gave up. But he is still here. And not only is he still here, Joe, you run a tight ship. You produce everywhere you go. That is a blessing to us and Sooner Nation. Thank you for that. Zach, love you. You've been mentioned. Thank you, Zach. But I want to, there is a lady hailed from my hometown through Coach Perry Anderson. Alex Anderson, are you ever around here? You're always working and you make everything happen. We thank you for that. Yeah. Lee Allen Smith, you're a good man. You know that? I grew up with you. The donors who give to this program, you give of your money, but that's the easy part. Anybody can give money, but you give more than that. You give of your heart. You give of your mind. You give of your energy. And there is no price for things such as those. That is what drives this program. That's what makes us say the word Sooner Nation as family. My teammates, players who played before me, Steve Owens, Zabel. You know, the name and the list is long, very long. The players who played with me, Chandler. And the players who, Joe Washington. When I was being recruited, Joe, you know what? I was a running back. And I would have been except for you showing up. <laughs> and that about that. Running backs are selfish creatures. Where's Greg Pruitt? My freshman year, he makes me carry his books across the campus. I didn't know to say no. I walked from Bud Wilkinson Tower all the way across to the university over here. He says, okay, freshman, sit down. I sat in the middle of the classroom, and he sits and puts his head on my shoulder and goes to sleep. Everybody in the class is looking at us, thinking that we are having a moment. <laughs> and I immediately say, Greg, get up. I gotta draw the line somewhere. <laughs> so, all of my teammates, all players who played with me, before me, after me, know that this is all about you. Three guys do not win 54 games. They don't, they don't do it. It takes a whole team. It takes the coaching staff and an administration that's all committed. Committed to the fact that we are more than ourselves and I tend to disappear and we steps up like a great big ball of fire.
And when that ball of fire is rolling, you don't care who you're playing, what time of day, what time of night, what jersey they wear, what color they are, you're going to beat their tail in. That's when it's working right. Chad Fisher, where are you? Where is the? There he is. Hey, today's statues. From what state are you from? Pennsylvania. Maybe I go there now. <laughs> but Chad, he took the heart of this Sooner Nation and the Selman family, and he made it here. Chad, thank for you and your team. Thank you so much. I'd be amiss if I did not say thank you to my hometown of Eufaula. I'd be amiss if I did not say thank you to the city of Norman and all the people here because we love this city. I'd be amiss if I did not say thank you to the state of Oklahoma because when I go to Woodward, when I go to Altus, when I go to Ada, I feel like I'm welcome there too. That is what this state is made of. So when you see it, I want you to see the whole picture. And you, one reporter asked me this week, if Leroy was here, what would he say? And his son Lee said it exactly right. He would ask you to know his God. He would have dressed this morning this way though. He'd have had a jacket on, light. He'd have had a handkerchief put in the in, interior pocket. He would have came here and he would have told you stories about you. He'd have told you stories about how you influenced his life. He'd have told you stories about his God. And he'd have looked at you, he would have wanted to make eye contact. It was always there. You look at Leroy and it's not like he's going to look away from him. He always wanted to put two eyes into yours and when the end of it, he would hug you. And he would smile. And he would say that today is not about him. He would say it's about you. And when everybody was all gone, when everybody walked away, he would sit by himself. At that point, he would pull a handkerchief out and he would cry. He would cry tears of joy, not because he was being honored. He would cry tears of joy because you were here. Just because you were here. Leroy Selman. Now we come for a moment, we're going to unveil this statue. If I don't stop talking, they're just going to pull the thing off real quick. <laughs> they're going to unveil the statue. But I want you to see a part of my family. But I want you to look hard in that. If that's all you see, you miss it. If that's all you see, we shouldn't have had the thing done today. I want you to see you. I want you to see your family. I want the players, past, present, and future, to see themselves. Keith Jackson, you were the best tight end I've ever seen play football. I want you to see, I want you to see you, your family. Not that you're going to look at it and say, I'm going to see a perfect. No, don't, don't look for that. You must accept ourselves for our accomplishments, our triumphs, and our failures. There was one perfect, there was one perfect person who walked this earth. And I think he had a hand in putting this here today. And when you look hard enough, and you think hard enough, when you pray hard enough, he'll whisper to you, and he'll say, well done, it is I, okay? Make sure as a nation we get there. I want y'all to know one thing, as we close and do it, someone sets this tail end down, is that I love you. Thank you for being here. Love your families. And I pray that we together will make even a better Sooner Nation and a better Oklahoma. Thank you. It is that time.
We are going to ask the uh, Selman children and grandchildren to do the honor for us. They're going to come and uh, get ready to pull the tarp today. Here's what's going to happen after we all together count this down. We got about 15 minutes to the Walk of Champions, and I want this whole mass of people to go greet Brent Venables and his team here in about 15 minutes. And then tonight, tonight, when it's third down and we're on defense, in honor of the Selmans, I want you to bring the roof off the palace tonight with your noise, all right? You do that for me? And the Selmans are going to lead the champions walk here in about 15 minutes they're going to lead brent venables and his team into the stadium tonight what a great scene this is look at the whole selman family down here zach what do you think you think we're ready to roll all right we're going to start with the number of national championships we have we're going to start with the number seven and count this down sooner nation in seven six five Sooner Scoop HD.